Alright guys, today we're going to be making Gym League in Roblox Studio. Gym League is a brand new game that just came out, which is kind of like a weightlifting simulator. So to keep this video short, we're going to just cover the main features of Gym League. So let's get started. So I'm going to open up a brand new base plate over here. So once you've opened up a brand new base plate, the first thing you're going to want to do is create the stamina bar. So you can go into start a GUI and insert a new screen GUI. We're going to call it stamina display. We're going to add a frame inside. So this is going to be the background for the stamina bar. So I'm just going to name it background. And I'm going to make it red. I'm going to change the sizing to 0 0.8 comma 0 0 0.0750. 0. I'm going to position it in the middle of the screen. I'm also going to add a UI corner to make it look nicer. Now we're going to add another bar, but this one will be a green bar. So I'm just going to duplicate this background frame over here and I'm going to put it inside the original background frame that we made. And I'm also going to change the size to 1010. And I'm going to position it right on top of the original one. So you can just change the position to 0000. And I'm also going to change the background color to green. So we're going to call this bar. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a text label which will show the current amount of stamina that the player has. So we're going to add a text label and I'm going to call it display. Now we're going to scale it properly as well. So we're going to do 1010 one, zero, one, zero. and I'm going to make the background transparency to 1. Scale the text. Give it a better font. I'm going to write stamina 100 out of 100. And I'm going to make the text color white. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to set up all the data that the player will have. So we have to go to server script service and insert a new script. I'm just going to call this script leader stats. So the first thing you want to do is get the server storage. Then we want to get the replicated storage. Now here we want to add a new folder inside server storage. So we're going to go ahead and add the folder. And we're going to call it player data. So this folder will hold all the data of the players in the server. Now we have to reference it from the script. So local data folder equals server storage wait for child player data. Now we're also going to have to create remote events inside replicated storage. So the first one we're going to create is going to be called update stamina. And the second one we're going to make is going to be called update biceps. So after we've created the two remote events, we have to reference it from this script. So we'll go update stamina event equals replicate storage wait for child update stamina. Now we have to get the update biceps event. So update biceps event equals replicate storage wait for child update biceps. Now we're going to connect a player added event so we can create a folder when a player joins. So we're going to do local player data folder equals instance dot new folder. We're going to assign the name of the folder to the player's user ID. So we're going to parent it to the data folder. Now we want to create another folder for the stamina. So we're going to do local stamina folder equals instance.new folder. 
stamina folder dot name equals stamina and stamina folder dot parent equals to the player data folder that we just created. Now inside that stamina folder, we're going to have two int values. The first one will represent the total amount of stamina that the player has, and then the second one will be the amount of stamina that they have remaining. So we're going to do local total stamina equals instance dot new int value. So total stamina dot name equals total stamina. Total stamina dot value equals 100 and then total stamina dot parent equals stamina folder. Now we're going to have to create an int value for the current stamina remaining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the section we wrote over here for the total stamina and I'm going to paste it. So first thing we have to do is we have to change the name of the variable to stamina remaining. And I'm going to duplicate that for all three of these sections. And lastly, we're going to change the name to stamina remaining. Now we're going to have to create an int value for the amount of biceps that the player has. So we're going to create a new instance value. We're going to call it biceps. We're going to set biceps value to zero. And we are going to parent it to the player data folder. Next, we're going to create a Boolean variable called isTraining. So this variable will keep track of when the player is actually doing the exercises because when they're doing the exercises we want their stamina to go down and when they're not we want it to replenish the stamina back so if they were at 50 stamina and they weren't training we want to slowly increase it back to 100. so is training dot name equals is training is training dot value equals to false and is training dot parent equals to player data folder so when the stamina remaining variable changes we want to update that in the gui that we created before so we're going to do stamina remaining dot changed connect function and then we're going to write some code over here so what we want to do is we want to fire the update stamina event so update stamina event fire client player stamina remaining dot value and then total stamina dot value so now we got to do the same thing for when the total stamina changes so we're going to copy these three lines over here and we're going to paste it now instead of doing stamina remaining we're going to do total stamina Next, we also have to detect when the amount of biceps that the player has changes. So we're going to do biceps.changedConnect function. And we're going to fire the update biceps event. So fire client player biceps.value. Next thing we have to do is we want to detect when the is training value changes. So we're going to do is training.changedConnect function. And then we type the following. So first we want to check if is training is false. So if they're not training, we want to slowly replenish the amount of stamina that they have. So we're going to use a repeat until loop. So we're going to wait half second. And then we have to check if is training is equal to false again, because it's possible that they stepped onto the machine. And when they stepped onto some exercise machine, then they are training. So we wouldn't want to replenish their stamina in that scenario. So if they're still not training, then we check if total stamina dot value minus stamina remaining dot value is less than math dot round total stamina dot value divided by 20. So if that's the case, we want to set stamina remaining dot value equal to the total stamina's value. But if it's not the case, we want to increment the stamina remaining value by 1 20th of the total stamina's value. 
So essentially what we're doing over here is we're checking if the stamina is almost full again, we will just replenish the full value. But if it's not almost full, we will slowly increment the current stamina that the player has. So essentially we're adding back 1 20th of the total stamina every 0.5 seconds. So we want to repeat until stamina remaining dot value is equal to total stamina dot value. The last thing we're going to do over here is we're going to do task dot weight three and we are going to update the stamina event. So if we run it right now, we'll see that in server storage, we'll have a folder with our user ID inside. And inside that folder, we'll have a folder called stamina with stamina remaining and total stamina. We'll also have a value for biceps and a bool value for is training. Now to see these stuff inside the server storage, you'll have to switch over to the server view. So you can do that by going under home and going beside this play button over here where it says current. So right now we're viewing the client right now. So we're viewing it as the player. But if you want to switch over to what the server sees, you have to click the button. Then you can see the stuff inside server storage. And then you can switch it back to look at the player's view. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we want to insert a local script inside the bar. So we're going to write the following. We're going to get the tween service. So game, get service, tween service. We're going to get the player. Game.players.local player. We're going to get the update stamina event equals game get service replicate storage paper child update stamina and we're going to get the display so local display equals script dot parent and we're going to create a function called update which has parameters called current stamina and total stamina Now we're going to calculate the stamina left. So we're going to do math.clamp current stamina slash total stamina comma zero comma one. Local info equals tween info dot new current stamina divided by total stamina enum dot easing style dot exponential enum dot easing direction dot in out zero false zero and then we're going to create the tween with display info curly brackets size equals udum2 dot from scale stamina left one and then play so when the update stamina events fire we're going to run that function so update stamina event on client event connect update so essentially what the script does is when the current stamina of the player gets updated we want to move this bar so we can display how much stamina they, they still have now what we're going to do is we're going to add another local script but this time we're going to add it inside this text display over here so we're going to do local update stamina event equals game get service rep paid storage wait for child update stamina we're gonna get the text label which is script dot parent 
and we're going to create the update function with the current stamina and total stamina as parameters. So we're going to do text label dot text equals stamina add a space two dots to concatenate the string open brackets concatenate again current stamina two dots slash two dots again total stamina two dots again and closing brackets and then we'll do update stamina event on client event connect update so basically what it'll do now is when the current stamina changes it will change the text as well as this green bar over here so let's say we change the stamina to 50 out of 100 so this green bar will move halfway down here and then the text will change as well to test the scripts we just wrote, I can go inside the leader stat script that we wrote earlier. And then after the task.wait, I can add this line over here. So I'm going to change the stamina remaining to 50. So we lost half our stamina. And we're going to see if it updates correctly. So right now we have 100. Now it's changed to 50 and the bar has moved halfway back. So let me just go back and remove this line and we're going to move on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create another GUI, but then this GUI is going to show the live stats of the player. So I'm gonna go under star GUI and I'm gonna insert another screen GUI. I'm gonna call it stats display. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna insert a frame over here. Now I'm gonna size it properly by going under the size property over here and then sizing it to 0 0.30, 0, 0 0.40. And then we'll adjust it from there. So maybe I'll make it a little smaller over here and a bit longer. I'm going to insert a UI corner and UI stroke to make it look nicer. I'm going to make the UI stroke a little thicker. And I'm going to call the frame mainframe. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a text label for the title. I'm going to size it appropriately. So I'm going to size it 1, 1, 0, 0 0.150. 0. I'm going to make the text scaled and I'm going to write the word stats. I'll just rename the label title so we don't get confused. I'm going to add two more text labels. So I'm just going to duplicate this title text label. And I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm going to write stamina. And I'm going to duplicate again. And then I'm going to write biceps. I'm going to duplicate this text over here again. I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to, and I'm going to write the current amount of stamina that the player has. And I'm going to do the same thing for biceps. I'm going to write zero. So just to avoid confusion, we're going to rename all of these text labels again. So this text label, we call it stamina title. This text label will be called biceps title. This text label will be called stamina value. stamina value and this text label will be called biceps value now inside stamina value we're going to add a local script so first thing we want to do is we want to reference the update stamina event so we're going to do local update stamina event equals game get service Replicate storage, wait for child, update, stamina. We're going to get the text label. So local text label equals script.parent. We're going to create a function called update. 
and we're going to pass two parameters, the current stamina and the total stamina. And basically what we want to do is we want to set the text to the total amount of stamina that the player has. So we want to connect the update stamina event to the function that we just created. So update stamina event on client event, connect, update. Now we want to take the script over here and we want to duplicate it. And now we're going to put it inside the biceps value text label. But now here we need to make some modifications. So we're going to click on the script over here. Now we're going to reference the update biceps event. I'm going to change the variable to update biceps event, which now you have to change the name down here. And the update biceps event only passes one parameter. So we got to change that to total biceps. Instead of changing the text label to total stamina, we're going to change it to total biceps. We're just going to test that really quickly by going back to the leader stat script and I'm going to set the total stamina to 200 and then biceps to 100. And we're going to see if this frame updates. And it did. And the GUI down here updated as well, so we're all good to go. Last thing you might want to do is add a UI corner for this title as well because you can see it kind of cuts in the corner over here. So I'm going to go to title and I'm going to add a UI corner. And it looks fixed now. So before we move on to anything else, you want to save the game to Roblox. So you can go to file and then save to Roblox. And I'm just going to call it gym game. And I'm going to click save. All right, now before we move on, we want to erase these two lines over here. So we're going to implement two exercises that are used in gym league. So we're going to have a treadmill, which will train your stamina, and we're going to have bicep curls, which trains your biceps. So we're going to do the one that trains the stamina first. So to do that, we're going to need to go to the toolbox and insert a treadmill. So I'm going to open up the toolbox. I'm going to search up treadmill. So I'm going to use this one by Epobot. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below, just in case you can't find it. So it includes one script. We're going to say OK. I'm going to place it right over here, right beside the spawn. So the first thing you should do is we're going to go inside the treadmill and we're going to open up this script. And we're just going to change one of the lines right here. We're going to change this from if speed not equals to 16 to if speed not equals to 12. So after you've done that, the next thing you have to do is insert a string value for the player that's currently using the treadmill. So we're going to call the value player. And we're going to insert an int value now, and we're going to call it speed. So basically, we're going to keep track of how fast the treadmill is going. Next thing we have to do is we're going to add a proximity prompt to the treadmill. So we're going to click this plus sign over here and we're going to add a proximity prompt. Now I'm going to change the max activation distance to 15 studs. And I'm going to uncheck this property called requires line of sight. And the last thing we're going to change is we're going to change the hold duration to 1. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a hitbox to the treadmill. Now the reason we have to add a hitbox is because as we need to detect whether or not the player is still on the treadmill. So we're going to go to the treadmill and we're going to insert a part inside. Now I'm going to scale this hitbox so that it's quite small. And usually you want to keep it in the middle. So maybe something like this. And maybe make it taller as well. So the hitbox is over here. And the player will have to basically touch this part so that the game knows that it's still on the treadmill. 
So we're going to rename the part to hitbox. We're going to turn off cast shadows. We are going to uncheck the can collide property and we're going to anchor the part. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to make it invisible as well. Next thing you want to do is you want to insert a script inside the proximity prompt. Before we add anything to the script, we have to insert another remote event. So we're going to go to replicate storage and insert a remote event. And we're going to call it award stamina. So now we can go back to the script and start coding. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the proximity prompt. So we can do local proximity prompt equals script dot parent. It's script.parent because this script is directly inside of the prompt. We need to get the conveyor. So local conveyor equals proximity prompt dot parent dot conveyor. We need to get the hitbox. So local hitbox equals proximity prompt dot parent dot hitbox. We need to get the screen. The screen is basically this part with text on it. So we need to get the screen. So local screen equals proximity prompt dot parent dot screen. We need to get the string value that's inside of the treadmill. So we're going to do local player using treadmill equals proximity prompt dot parent dot player. And we need to get the int value, which represents the speed that the treadmill is going on. So local speed equals proximity prompt dot parent dot speed. Now we need to get the server storage. We need to get the data folder that's inside server storage. So server storage, wait for child, player data. And we need to get the award stamina event that we just created. So game, get service, replicate storage, wait for child, award stamina. Now we're going to detect when the proximity prompt gets triggered. So we're going to do proximity prompt dot triggered connect function player. So proximity prompt dot enabled equals false player using treadmill dot value equals player dot name local player folder equals data folder wait for child equals game dot players colon get user ID from name async player dot name Local is training equals player folder wait for child is training. And we're going to set is training equals to true. Now we're going to get the player's character by doing player dot character or player dot character added wait. We're going to get the humanoid root part by doing character wait for child humanoid root part. Now we're going to set the humanoids C frame to the conveyors C frame plus vector three dot new zero three zero. So we're going to position the player right above the conveyor. The last thing we're going to do is we are going to make the player face the treadmill. So we're going to do C frame dot new humanoid group part dot position and screen dot position. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to make the player face the treadmill screen. Now we're going to create a function that will detect if the player is still on the conveyor. So we're going to do local function player on conveyor. And right above that, we're going to create a function called get touching parts. So local connection equals 
Oh, hang on. I forgot to add an argument over here. This get touching part function has a parameter called part. So now we're going to go back to the line 29 over here. So local connection equals part dot touched connect function end. We're going to do local results equals part get touching parts. And we're going to disconnect the connection. And we're going to return results. So we can get a list of touching parts. So now we're going to go back to the player on conveyor function and we're going to do local touching parts equals get touching parts hitbox. So we're going to get a list of parts that are touching the hitbox. So now we're going to do for IV in pairs touching parts do if v dot parent find for child humanoid. So if one of the parts that are touching it belongs to a player and the character that touched it is the player that's currently using the treadmill and the part that touched it is the humanoid root part. Then we're going to return true. And at the end of the function, we're going to return false. So basically what this function does is it detects all the touching parts on the hitbox and it makes sure it's from the player that's using the treadmill and it makes sure that the part that touched it is the humanoid root part. So if we can find the humanoid root part that's touching the hitbox, we'll, we will return true. But if we can't, we'll return false. The last function we're going to create is a function to eject the player from the treadmill. So it'll take in two parameters, player and data. So we're going to get the character by doing local character equals player dot character or player dot character added weight. We're going to get the humanoid by doing character weight for child humanoid. We're going to make the character ragdoll, so we're going to make them sit. We are going to empty the value of the player that's currently using the treadmill. So the player that's currently using the treadmill will just be some blank value because they've been kicked off the treadmill. We're going to re-enable the proximity prompt. We are going to set the speed to zero. And we're going to set the is training value of the player equals to false. We're going to wait two seconds. And we're going to make them unragdoll. So humanoid.sit equals false. Now we're going to create a wild loop. So we're going to do while true do task.wait1 and we're going to check if anyone is using the treadmill. So if game.players find first child player using treadmill.value and speed.value is not equal to zero, then we're going to get the player local player equals game.players find for child player using treadmill dot value and get the player folder by going to data folder wait for child player dot user ID we're gonna get the stamina folder by doing local stamina folder equals player folder wait for child stamina we're gonna get the current stamina by doing stamina folder wait for child stamina remaining we're going to get the total stamina by doing stamina folder wait for child total stamina and now what we're going to do is we're going to check if the current stamina is more than five so if it is we're going to take away five stamina from the player. So current stamina dot value minus equals five. 
we're going to add the speed of the treadmill divide by four to the total stamina of the player and we're going to fire the award stamina event to the player and then the amount which is speed dot value divided by four otherwise we're going to eject the player by doing eject player with the parameters player and player folder we're also going to check if the player is not on the conveyor so if the player is not on conveyor then eject player player and player folder we're also going to add an else if statement over here so else if game.players find first child player using treadmill.value and not player on conveyor then we're going to do local player equals game.players find first child player using treadmill.value local player folder equals data folder wait for child player.user id we're going to eject the player passing the player and the player folder as arguments so next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the treadmill script over here maybe i should rename that so everything's clear so treadmill script so i'm going to go back over here and instead of having local speed equals zero we're going to reference the int value that we just created so we're going to do local speed equals script dot parent dot speed and since speed is an int value we're going to have to do speed.value for everything that involves speed so so I'm gonna to have to take this dot value I'm gonna paste it after every iteration of the word speed so speed.value equals speed.value plus four speed.value is not equal zero speed.value equals speed.value minus four Instead of having a while loop to change the speed of the conveyor, we're going to just connect it to the changed event of the speed variable. So speed.changed connect function. And we're going to do conveyor.velocity equals conveyor.velocity.cframe times speed.value. And the text label on the screen of the treadmill will be speed equals speed colon speed dot value and we're going to remove this while loop over here so i'm just going to run this really quickly just to make sure it works so i'm going to click play and we are going to go over here and we're going to interact with the treadmill Alright, so it looks like I made a small error over here, so you should go back to the player on conveyor function and go under this if statement over here. So instead of doing if v.parent.name equals player using treadmill.name, it should be player using treadmill.value because that's where the player is found. Alright, so another error I made was under this latest script that we wrote. So go back to line 19 over here and instead of is training equals to true it should be is training dot value equals to true all right so it looks like i made another error over here so what you want to do is you want to go back to the leader stat script that we wrote that's in server script service and where we checked if is training is equal to false make sure it's is training dot value so let's run that again. So I'm going to interact with the treadmill. I'm going to start the treadmill up. And as you can see, I'm losing stamina because I'm getting tired, but my total stamina is also going up. So once I run out of stamina, I should ragdoll but then I'm slowly gaining my stamina back. 
Now I'm going to interact with it again. And I'm going to see what happens if I just fall off the treadmill. I ragged all as well. So everything's working properly and we can move on to the next thing. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create a GUI that will pop up text showing that you gained stamina. So we're going to go to start GUI and we're going to create another GUI. So we're going to go to start GUI and insert another screen GUI. This one I'm going to call stamina added. And I'm just going to add one text label inside. So I'm going to change the text to plus one stamina. I'm going to make the text green. And I'm going to change the background transparency to one. I'll also scale the text. And I'm going to add a local script inside as well. So let me just rename the text label and I'm just going to call it label. So the first thing you want to do is get the text label. So local label equals script dot parent dot label. Now I want to get the stamina gained event by doing game get service replicate storage wait for child award stamina. Now I'm going to create a new tween info by doing tween info dot new and then enter. So I want the tween to last for one second. I'm going to set the easing style to linear. I'm going to set the easing direction to in. I don't want it to repeat and I want it to reverse. And I'm going to set zero as the delay time. So I'm going to do local properties to change equals equals text transparency equals zero. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to duplicate this text, except it's properties to change to. And I'm going to change the text transparency to one. I'm going to create a function called activate with the parameter called amount. I'm going to duplicate the text label by doing a local cloned label equals label clone cloned label dot parent equals script dot parent cloned label dot position equals udem2 dot new math dot random 200 800 divided by a thousand zero math dot random 200 800 divided by a thousand zero clone label dot text equals plus then concatenate amount concatenate again stamina I'm going to create a tween so local tween equals game get service tween service create cloned label tween info properties to change tween dot completed connect function cloned label destroy tween play actually we don't need this properties to change too so I'm just going to delete it the last thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the stamina changed event to this function. So stamina changed event on client event, connect, activate. I'm going to change the text transparency to one, make it invisible. All right, I made a small mistake over here. It should be easing direction, not easing style. So I'm going to run it again and see if it works. So I'm going to interact with the treadmill again, and I'm going to start it up, and we are gaining one stamina, and it's showing on the screen.
Now if you increase the speed of the treadmill, you get more stamina. So you can see we're gaining two stamina now. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to do the bicep curls. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go inside the toolbox and find a pair of barbells to use for this tutorial. So I'm gonna go in the toolbox, I'm gonna to search out weights. And I think I'm gonna use this first one by Emilski over here. Just in case you can't find it, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. And same thing for the treadmill. I'll leave a link for that as well. So I'm gonna insert it in starter pack and I'm gonna test it to see if it fits nicely. It looks all right, so I guess we're gonna stick with this one. All right, so instead of putting in the starter pack, I'm gonna put it in server storage. And I'm gonna rename it barbell. So now I'm gonna add an int value called weight. So this will represent how heavy the barbell is. And by default, we wanna set it to one, so one kilogram. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add a barbell GUI. So I'm gonna go inside start GUI and I'm gonna insert another screen GUI. This one I'm gonna call barbell GUI. Barbell GUI. And I'm gonna insert a frame inside. I'm gonna put it on this side of the screen. I'm going to scale it. So maybe like 0 0.30, 0, 0 0.30. I'm going to call it main frame. I'm going to insert a title inside. I'm going to scale it properly. So like 1, 0, 0 0.150. Maybe like 0 0.20. I'm going to scale the text and I'm going to say add weights. I'm going to name the text label title. Now I'm going to add two text buttons. So this one I'll have text that says plus one. And I'm going to scale it properly as well. So I'm going to go to the size property. And I'm going to size it to 0 0.40, 0 0.30. So something like that. I'm going to scale the text. And I'm going to duplicate it, put one on this side as well, but instead we're going to say minus one. So I'm going to name the button that says plus one add, and the other one minus. And I'm going to have one more text label that will tell you the current weight that you're currently bicep curling. So current weight, colon, one kilogram. I'm gonna scale this text label over here to one zero zero point two zero. And I'll put it right in the middle over here. Maybe I'll scale the text as well. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the mainframe's background transparency invisible and make the background of the add weights title invisible and this current weights text label is background transparency, I'm gonna also make it invisible. Maybe the buttons I'll move down a bit. And I'll adjust the background transparency of these two buttons to 0 0.5. So now I'm gonna go inside replicate storage and I'm gonna add another remote event. And this one will be called update barbell weight. So now I'm gonna go inside this GUI I just created inside the add button and I'm gonna add a local script. So first thing I'm gonna do is reference that event that we just created. So the update barbell wait event, which is equal to game, get service, replicate storage, wait for child, update barbell wait. And basically when the button gets pressed, we're gonna fire that event. So when the add weight button gets pressed, we're going to fire an event to update the barbell weight. So fire server, and we're gonna say add. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the minus button. So what we're gonna do is we are going to duplicate this local script over here, and we're gonna move it inside the minus button. 
So the script inside the minus button, we're going to open and we're going to modify by changing the argument we're sending from add to minus. One thing we should do is rename this text label over here so we don't get confused. I'll just name it current weight display. So now we're going to have to go back into service script service and add a new script to handle the barbell's weight changing. So I'm going to add a new script. And I am going to get the update barbell weight event. Update barbell weight event equals game get service replicate storage update barbell weight. So I'm going to create a function called update barbell, which will take in player and the operation type. And we also want to connect the barbell weight event to the function that we're creating right now. So update barbell. So the first thing we have to do is get the player's character. So we can do that by doing local character equals player dot character or player dot character added weight. We're going to have an empty variable for the barbell. And now we're going to try and locate where the barbell is. So it can either be in the player's backpack or in the player's character, depending on whether or not they're equipping it or not. So if player dot backpack find first child barbell then barbell equals player dot backpack find first child barbell else if player dot character find first child barbell then barbell equals player dot character find first child barbell so if the barbell is successfully located then local weight equals barbell weight for child weight and if operation equals add then weight dot value plus equals one Else, if weight.value is greater than 1, then we will subtract 1 from the weight. The last thing we want to do is we want to fire the update barbell weight event so that the client will update the current weight shown. So fire event player weight dot value so now i'm going to go back into the gui that we just made i'm going to insert a local script inside current weight display so this text label down here and i'm going to insert a local script so i'm going to go back and get this update barbell event and we're going to do local function update weight and we're going to connect the function back to the event so update barbell weight event on client event connect update so we're going to do script dot parent dot text equals current weight colon concatenate weight kg now I'm just going to go back and call this script that we just wrote here barbell handler just so we don't get confused. So I'm just going to disable this GUI right now so we can hide it away. So the next thing we have to do is we have to create the animation for the barbell. So first thing we want to do is we want to go to rig builder. And we're going to select the rig type, so R15, block avatar. So we have a character here that we can animate. So now under the same tab, so under the avatar tab, we're going to open the animation editor. Now we have to select the rig that we're going to use to animate, which is this rig. We're going to create the clip. 
Now, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to set the arm upright because that's the default position of after you've equipped it the barbell. So that's the starting position. So now what we want to do is where you want the arm to flex down like this and then back up. That's one rep. So to animate it, we need to set the starting position, which we've just done by lining it here at the start position. We're going to slide this timeline down a bit and then we're going to rotate this arm and maybe rotate the lower arm as well. We're going to drag it down again. And we're going to drag the arm down further as we get further down in the rep. We're going to drag the timeline down again. Now we're fully extended back down. I'm going to drag the timeline down a little bit more and we're going to go back up. So after you flex down, your arm goes back up to complete the rep. So maybe I'll move this keyframe a little further. Slide it again. And I'll bring the arm up a bit more. And then we're gonna complete the rep up here. And make sure you put it back to its original position. Otherwise it'll look a little funny. So we're gonna play the animation by pressing the play button over here to see how it looks like. So that looks pretty good. So last thing you have to do is you have to click these three dots over here and set the animation priority to action. Now you can publish the animation to Roblox. So you can click publish to Roblox and we can name the clip weightlifting. Now you don't see the publish button over here, but that's because the window is a little too big. So what you can do is you can just go at the top and then size it down and drag it up. So now that's the save button is visible. So we're going to click save. And it's important you keep this ID that you have here. So everyone's ID is going to be different. So you want to copy that down because we're going to need it for later. So I'm going to copy it. And then we can close. After that, we don't really need this rig anymore. So we can delete it. So now we're going to go back to the barbell and insert a script. Now inside the script, you should also insert an animation inside. Now we're just going to call it lift animation. And it has a property called animation ID. So remember that animation ID I told you to save? Well, this is where you're supposed to paste it in. So paste in that ID you have and click enter. Inside the script, we will start by defining some variables. So we're going to get the tool. So local tool equals script dot parent local animation equals script wait for child lift animation local cooldown equals false local player local server storage equals game and get service server storage Local data folder equals server storage, wait for child, player data. Now here we're gonna add a new remote event. So this remote event will be called award biceps. So now we can reference it from this script over here. So local award biceps event equals game, get service, replicate storage, wait for child, award biceps. Player equals Game dot players find for child tool dot parent dot name local player GUI equals player wait for child player GUI local barbell GUI equals player GUI wait for child barbell GUI. So make sure everything matches the name. So if you called it barbell GUI or weight GUI, it has to be spelled correctly and precisely here. And we are going to enable the barbell GUI.
Now we're going to do tool.activated connect function. If not cooldown, then cooldown equals true. Local player folder equals data folder wait for child player.user ID. Local is training equals player folder wait for child is training local biceps equals player folder wait for child biceps we're gonna set is training dot value equals to true we're gonna get the character by doing player dot character or player dot character added weight we're gonna do local Loaded animation equals character dot humanoid load animation animation loaded animation play biceps dot value plus equals tool dot weight dot value. So now we are increasing the player's biceps based on how heavy the weights are. And we're also gonna fire the awards biceps event. So the player can see that they're actually earning biceps. And we're gonna do task.weight1, cooldown equals false. So basically they can lift it once every second. So make sure to save your game often so you don't lose any of your data so control s to save now what we're going to do now is add the station for the bicep curls so i'm going to insert a new part over here size it to 15 0 0.1 15 and we're also going to add a hitbox so i'm just going to duplicate this part over here and place it right on top. So this hitbox will go inside of this base over here. So I'm gonna call this bicep base and I put the hitbox inside of it. Make sure to anchor both parts. Also make sure that the hitbox has its can collide property equal to false and then we're gonna make it invisible. Now inside this bicep base part, we're gonna add a string value called player, just like we did for the treadmill. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the proximity prompt we had over here with the script inside, and I'm gonna put it inside the bicep base. Now inside this proximity prompt script, I'm gonna rename it to bicep script, just so we don't get confused. So we're going to go inside this bicep script and we're going to modify a few things. So we're going to delete this conveyor variable because we don't have a conveyor inside the bicep training area. We don't have a screen either so I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove the speed variable. Instead of having the variable player using treadmill, we're going to have players using curl. So it will be found under proximity player. And we also want to reference the base equals proximity prompt dot parent. And instead of referencing the award stamina event, we are going to reference the update barbell weight event. And we're also going to change the reference over here. So instead of wait for child award stamina, we're going to do wait for child update barbell weight. So we're gonna replace this variable over here in line 12 to player using curl. And we are going to delete these two lines over here as well. Instead, we are going to get the barbell from the server storage. And we're gonna clone it and then parent it to the player's character. 
We're also going to set the humanoid root parts C frame to the basis C frame plus vector3.new030. And then here in the player on conveyor function, instead of using the player using treadmill variable, we're going to do player using curls. And when we're ejecting the player, we are going to also have a third parameter called ragdoll. Because there are two different scenarios where you might want to inject a player. When they run out of stamina and when they step out of the bicep training zone. So if they just step out of the zone, you don't want to ragdoll them. The only time you want to ragdoll them is when they run out of stamina. So we're going to add a few lines in here. So local player GUI equals player. Wait for child player GUI. And we are going to get the barbell GUI. Player GUI, wait for child, bar, bell GUI. We're going to fire the update barbell event. Passing on the player and one. And we're going to disable the barbell GUI. And when the player is ejected, we want to just set the players using curl value to an empty string because no one else is using it. So we're going to delete that line over here. We're going to re-enable the proximity prompt. And we're going to say that the player has stopped training. We're also going to delete the barbells. So if backpack find first child barbell, then player.backpack.barbell destroy else if player.character find first child barbell then player.character.barbell destroy we're also going to check if ragdoll so if we want to ragdoll the player, then humanoid.sit equals true, task.wait2, and then we're going to unragdoll them two seconds later. So we can delete these lines at the bottom over here. So in this if statement, we're going to do if players find first child players using curls.value, and we're going to delete the second part of the conditional statement. We're also going to replace this line over here. So local players equals game dot players find first child players using curls dot value. We're going to reference the player folder. We're going to get the total stamina, stamina remaining, and total stamina. So if the stamina is more than five, we're going to subtract five, and we're going to delete these two lines over here. Otherwise, we're going to eject the player. And we're going to remove this else if block over here. Last thing we're going to do is add the bicep update GUI. So just like we did for stamina added, we're going to do the same thing for biceps added. So the only thing we have to do is duplicate this stamina added GUI. I'm going to call it biceps added. And this text label over here, we're going to say plus one biceps and maybe we'll make it red instead and we're going to go in the local script and we're going to modify the event that it references so instead of stamina gained event it will be biceps gained event and we're going to reference the award biceps event and then change the variable at the bottom over here as well so after all that let's test everything So I'm going to go over here to the bicep section. I'm going to interact. Now I got the barbell. And as I click, the animation is playing and I am gaining bicep strength while losing stamina. I can also add the amount of weights that are on. So now I'm gaining two biceps. 
And when I run out of stamina, it takes away the weight. One thing I missed though, I used to go back to the proximity prompt script for the biceps. I have to add the new parameter in. So if they run out of stamina, I want them to ragdoll. But if they just stepped off to the base, I want to just not ragdoll them. And I'll also change the name of the function as well. So player on base rather than player on conveyor because there's no conveyor. I'll modify that down here as well. So if they run out of stamina, I want them to ragdoll, but if they just step off the base, I don't need them to ragdoll. So I'm gonna run the game one more time. And if I go over here, and I keep curling until I run out of stamina, I will ragdoll. So once I ragdoll, I lose the barbell and the GUI disappears. But I can interact with it again after my stamina has regained and I can keep training. Or if I decide I don't have enough stamina, I can go back here and start training on this treadmill. Last thing you might want to consider adding is a disable reset script. So you can insert a local script into starter player scripts under starter player. And the script looks like this and it will disable resetting, which might be something you want to consider because resetting might break a few things inside this game that I've made. So in this video, we covered the core aspects of Gym League. If you like this video or you learned something new, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.